What is going on guys and welcome back to another very exciting video. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at PayPal's new CEO and they are bringing him over from Intuit. So what I want to do is I want to dive into Intuit's numbers. I want to take a look at what sections of the business he was specifically involved in, how the revenue is stacked up, EPS numbers, outstanding shares, and really go over the overall impact that he could have on PayPal's business moving forward. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. Let's start off by taking a look at PayPal's stock chart. We can see that over the last month, the stock has basically traded sideways down almost 1%. If we look year to date, PayPal is a stock that has suffered, especially when you compare it to the overall market. This stock is down over 18%. And if we look from the highs of the year to the lows, we can see that the stock is down almost 32%. Over the last year, we can see that this company is down almost 40%. And over the last five years, this company is down 33%, which is absolutely insane, especially when you look into the metrics behind the business and how much they have grown over the last five years. If we look at from all-time highs of over $300 to where the stock is trading at now, we can see that the stock is down over 80%. One of the reasons the stock has been hurt over the last year is the uncertainty around the CEO position. However, on August 14th, they announced that a former senior executive at Intuit by the the name of Alex Chris would be the next president and CEO of the company effective September 27th. Since January of 2019, Alex Chris has been the executive vice president and general manager of Intuit's small business and self-employed group. This group is responsible for more than half of Intuit's revenue. Chris currently serves on Intuit's executive leadership team and has led a global organization of thousands of colleagues that delivered QuickBooks and MailChimp to millions of users around the world. The businesses he has over seen and led at Intuit have become market leading end end customer growth engines and platforms for small business and mid market companies and entrepreneurs to enable them to grow and run their businesses confidently. During the five years that Chris led the small business segment, he grew its customers and revenues at a compound annual growth rate of 20 and 23% respectively. In 2021, he led into its successful $12 billion acquisition of MailChimp. It is clear from this statement what PayPal prioritized in their look for this new CEO. That is their growth rate when it comes to customers and revenues. And that is what investors have really been looking for from PayPal. Because we've seen their revenues fall down into single digit growth rates, we would like to see those get back into the 10 to 15% range. And this seems to be a good candidate to help accelerate that growth. We also see the mention of the acquisition of MailChimp. And that is one thing that I think PayPal is going to focus on over the coming years is potential acquisitions to help grow their business. And PayPal's board hopes that if Alex Chris can help accelerate these numbers, they will see this acceleration reflected in their stock price. And we can see from Intuit over the last five years, they have experienced almost 150% growth in their stock price. Intuit also does a very good job of beating on their EPS and revenue numbers, which overall is a very good thing for a company that means they aren't over-promising and under-delivering. They came in with almost a 15% beat on their EPS EPS numbers in the most recent quarter. They reported $1.65 versus the expected $1.44. If we look at revenue, they came in with over a 2.5% beat when they reported $2.71 billion versus an expected $2.64 billion. And for a boring old tax company, Intuit does a very good job of growing its total revenues. We can see that for the full year, revenue came in at $14.4 billion, which was up 13% year over year. In the sector of the business that Alex Chris was directly directly involved in, their small business and self-employed group grew their revenue by 24%. And we can see those numbers shown here as well. Revenue up 13% year over year, operating income up 22%, earnings per share up 16% to $8.42 from $7.28. Here we have Intuit's trailing 12-month revenue over the last five years. And back in 2018, they were bringing in around $6.1 billion. That has more than doubled over the last five years up to $14.4 billion. Their EPS numbers have also seen solid growth over the last five years. Back in 2018, they were bringing in around $5.23 for their trailing 12-month EPS. We can see that now they're bringing in around $8.42, which is up around 50% over the last five years. This is one of the charts from Intuit that I don't love. If we look previous to 2018, they were actually buying back a fairly large portion of their shares, and we saw their shares outstanding 
outstanding declining steadily. However, since 2018, we've seen their shares outstanding actually increasing. They are buying back some of their shares. We could see that in 2023, they repurchased $2.0 billion worth of stock. The board also approved an additional $2.3 billion worth of repurchases. This is giving the company a total authorization of $3.8 billion worth of repurchases. However, even with these repurchases, we are seeing their shares outstanding continue to grow, which means the company is offering a fair amount of stock-based compensation to its employees. Another positive from Intuit is over the last five years, they have doubled their free cash flow. We can see in 2018, they had almost $2 billion in free cash flow, and that has gone all the way up to almost $5 billion in free cash flow in 2023. The point of showing all these numbers is not to show how great of a business Intuit is, is to show the background that Alex Chris is coming from. He's coming from a business that understands the importance of growing revenue and EPS numbers, also the importance of free cash flow growth and repurchasing your own stock. And all of that is going to contribute to his experience and how he runs the company at PayPal. One of the things to keep in mind is that PayPal's biggest threat right now is competition. And this is a worry for a lot of investors. They see companies like Apple, Square, Google Pay all coming into the market and trying to take market share away from PayPal. And this is very similar to the tax space. The tax space is also riddled with competition. We have Intuit's TurboTax, we have TaxSlayer, we have Cash App Taxes, Jackson Hewitt, H&R Block, and they're all vying for customers' business. And what that means is there is a lot of competition in this space and a lot of competition over very thin margins. And Intuit has done a very good job of bringing small businesses and entrepreneurs into their ecosystem and getting them to use their tax software. And this is something I believe PayPal is looking at doing as well, trying to focus on small businesses and online stores like Shopify and how they can really integrate better with these entrepreneurs and small businesses. In my opinion, the biggest thing for Alex Chris to focus on over the next couple of years is revenue growth. Right now, analysts are projecting for 2023 around 8% growth and for 2024, 9% growth. If we could see numbers around 15 to even 20% growth, I think that would have a massive impact on the stock price as well as EPS numbers and their free cash flow numbers. Overall, I think this was a solid pickup by PayPal for their CEO position. I think Alex Chris comes from a good background of understanding how to grow revenue, how acquisitions can impact the business, EPS growth, free cash flow growth, and share repurchases. I think those are all good things that he will bring back to PayPal and help expand at PayPal, especially because over the last year or so, we haven't seen the revenue growth that investors have been expecting. And I think if we can get some acquisitions and potentially grow revenue at a faster pace, that will have a big impact on the stock price. But keep in mind, do not buy a company just because some random guy on YouTube talked about it. Make sure you are doing your own research and looking into companies that meet your risk tolerance as well as your time horizon. So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. And as always, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day.